If you guys haven't jumped in yet and gotten yourself or a loved one a hunt a killer box, then you're seriously missing out. There's nothing more satisfying than jumping into one of their boxes and hunting down a killer. So right now, go to huntakiller.com slash scary mysteries and use the code scary and get 20% off of your order. Everyone here loves listening about mysteries, but with Hunt a Killer, you get to actually solve one by sifting through evidence and murder weapons, listening to audio recordings and reading creepy letters. Complete one of these boxes with a friend or significant other and have a nice evening. And if you're solo, then go do it for yourself or chat with the thousands of other Hunt a Killer fans in their spoiler-free community. Go to huntedkiller.com slash scary mysteries and use code scary for 20% off of your order. Five bosses that got killed by their assistants. Workplace violence is actually quite common, whether it's face to face or work from home. Usually it's the employees who feel disgruntled over how their bosses treat them. And while many people only fantasize about doing harmful things, there are some who actually act upon their dark fantasies. Here are five bosses that got killed by their assistants. Number five, Linda Stein. Known to most as an American rock music manager, Linda Stein once handled the ultra-famous American punk rock band The Ramones. She even managed the 1970s pop music icon Steve Forbert. Taking her resume to another level, the New York native was also a high-profile real estate broker. She had brokered singers like Madonna and Sting, actors like Bruce Willis and Demi Moore, and even fashion moguls like Donna Karen of DKNY. What she had achieved can only be envied by most, but what everyone didn't know was that during her late 50s, Stein had been dealing with several health issues like breast cancer and a brain tumor. These conditions made her quite a bit moody and cranky. Family and friends would sometimes recall how the matriarch would oftentimes lash out her anger on everyone over some petty issues. And it didn't help that she was a heavy drinker. Often receiving the brunt of her volcanic temper was the woman who was constantly beside her, her personal assistant, Natavia Lowry. Described to be quite timid, Lowry claimed that her boss would constantly yell at her and berate her over just about anything at work. One time in 2006, Stein reportedly threw a heap of racial comments that really offended the employee. To add insult to injury, The real estate broker even blew marijuana smoke on the latter's face. This incident would be the last straw for 28-year-old Lowry. She then picked up a yoga stick and began to beat the 62-year-old with it in Stein's Manhattan apartment. She continued lashing out at her until the former talent manager was dead. The accused went on to steal from the victim a lot of money amounting to $30,000 from her bank account. And though the murder weapon was never recovered, Lowry came out to confess the crime. She was later convicted and then sentenced to life in prison for the murder and theft. This story reminds us that people, no matter how patient and nice they may seem to be, still have a point where they will ultimately forget their humanity and unleash their brutal side. Number four, Kim Jones. It's not always the case that a subordinate would feel animosity towards his or her superior because of maltreatment and abuse. Sometimes it's also for selfish reasons. Kim Jones was best remembered by her family and friends as a person whose purpose in life was to give and help everyone in need. No wonder she was designated as the program director for the Turning Points for Children, a nonprofit social and health service organization based in Philadelphia. Sometime in 2013, the organization hired a certain Randolph Sanders as an assistant director. 
He worked directly under Jones, and unbeknownst to the 56-year-old charity worker, Sanders had been making some illegal transactions right under everyone's noses. Allegedly, the 36-year-old had stolen at least $40,000 from the nonprofit. He would have continued to rob the organization as well had it not been for Jones and some of her cohorts who caught him. Fighting for what was right, the former executive decided to go to Philadelphia's Department of Human Services to report her findings. And should it be proven, Sanders would have been arrested and locked up. But something tragic happened instead. On January 13, 2015, Jones was waiting for a bus along 12th and Jefferson Street in North Philadelphia. She had her headphones on and was listening to music. And at that point, Sanders, who was dressed in a disguise, walked up quietly behind his boss and without hesitation pulled out a gun and shot the woman in the back of the head. Sanders immediately fled from the crime scene. Surveillance video footage then showed the shooter fleeing through a local university, down into a subway system, and exiting at a park. He was then seen walking to a vehicle parked along the street. Detectives were able to track him down by identifying the car that he drove. He was then taken into custody at his home on Ryerson Road. A search was also made inside the residence, which led to the discovery of three guns he allegedly used in the shooting. He was later charged for Jones' death after confessing to the crime. It's disheartening to know that those who work selflessly for the betterment of their community have to perish just because of some greedy individuals whose only concern are their personal gains. Number three, Philip Gleddy. We're no stranger to stories about powerful executives preying on those women below them, such as their secretaries or personal assistants. Psychologists say this shouldn't come as a big surprise considering that men, especially those in power, would tend to have a higher sex drive. Philip Gleddy was a man who single-handedly fought through hardships and poverty to become one of France's most important industrialists. He was the owner of a company called Princeps Alu, a PVC and aluminum frame manufacturer in the southern town of Dezoy. A married father of two, the CEO was anything but a family man. At least that's what the people who knew him would say. Witness statements seem to suggest that Gleddy was more like a stud at the workplace who loved to get around on his female colleagues. It wasn't exactly revealed how this behavior affected his family and marriage life, but suffice to say, his wife was still concerned of his welfare. On February 27, 2012, Stephanie Gleddy, his other half, went to the police to report the disappearance of her husband. The following day, Mr. Gleddy's vehicle was found four miles away from his company's grounds. There was no sign of him and the police thought he could have run away with someone. Others believed he could have committed suicide, but many tend to disagree. Knowing his appetite for adventures and excitement, people thought this would be the last thing that he'd do. One week later, a staggering development in the case occurred. Found abandoned in a wooded area near Palat Regional Nature Park in the Rhone Alps region of southeastern France were the remains of the company's boss. The crime scene was a gnarly sight to behold as well. His body was riddled with bullets, with two of them fired into his head at close range. The area was scoured for any evidence and hints, but nothing could be found and the absence of a witness further hampered the investigation. Obviously, there were theories implying the possibility of an assassination perpetrated by competitors, but this was quickly debunked for its lack of basis. As the police continued to dig into the matter, they then came across the victim's alleged infidelities, and this was even more reinforced with the appearance of his longtime secretary, Bettany Bowe. Bo, a married woman and with children, 
had worked for Gleddy since the company was created back in 2001. Much to the shock of everyone, the 41-year-old confessed to the murder. In her defense, her lawyer said that the crime was linked to stress. Her counsel, meanwhile, insisted that there had been no romantic relationship between the two. This came as a big surprise for everyone who knew Gleddy and Bo. The two basically had known each other for almost 20 years. Surprisingly, some co-workers were not convinced of the woman's admittance, and they suspected there must be a much deeper and darker reason for this tragic incident to occur. While there wasn't enough information to go through with the case, we could at least surmise that the CEO's secretary may have had something to do with the killing. And, as for what may have forced her to do this horrible thing, that would be for us to find out later. Number 2. Su Ming Hu There are only a few emotions as toxic as jealousy. A mixture of anxiety, anger, and depression, this bad feeling can sometimes force someone to do unpleasant things. Su Ming Hu was a businessman from Taiwan who found success in Indonesia. The 52-year-old banker, however, had some other dealings aside from those conducted at his shop. He apparently had a sexual relationship with one of his employees and even got the woman pregnant. Known only by her initials, SS, the 37-year-old reportedly received a huge amount of money from her boss. The purpose was for her to terminate the pregnancy through an abortion, and while this might be enough to upset SS, there was actually another reason why she got so mad at her employer. It turned out that Ming Hu also had another woman in his life. She was a domestic helper who worked for him at his home, and it didn't sit well with SS when she knew that the man even wanted to marry the maid instead of her. And so, on July 23rd, 2020, the disgruntled employee hired contract killers to murder the father of her child at his home in Bakasi, West Java. The perpetrators then dumped the body in the East Tarim River, where it was later found and recovered. Police soon arrested the killers and the mastermind of the crime. The ensuing investigation also had inadvertently revealed the clinic where she reportedly had an abortion. SS and the hitmen had been charged with premeditated murder, and if proven guilty, the woman may face life in prison for concocting this evil plan. While it was probably right for the accused to harbor hatred towards her boss-slash-lover, calling up for the murder was probably the biggest mistake she could have ever done in her life. Number 1. Maxine Urbanzik Trust is a very hard thing to come by. Unfortunately, there are those who, after winning other people's trust, would use it in order to accomplish their twisted goals. Maxine Urbanzik was a woman lovingly remembered as a kind and cheerful assistant manager of a Kentucky Fried Chicken restaurant located near Taft Street in Merrillville, Indiana. At the age of 61, Urbanzik was still as active as ever, working almost 80 hours a week. One of those people who helped her out was Ronnie Rice, the 26-year-old Merrillville man had been working at the fast food chain for a year before the tragic incident occurred. One early morning in December of 2007, Urbanzik went to work. Her usual routine would be to prop open the back door to allow crew members to come in. Surveillance cameras later revealed the young man entering the same kitchen access door. Inside, Rice then confronted his elderly supervisor and then beat her to death with a chair. Afterwards, he took the money from the store and fled the scene. At around the same time where everyone else clocks in for work, the perpetrator can be seen entering the same back door again. He had the same clothes on, and two of his co-employees were shocked to find their boss lying lifeless on the floor. Meanwhile, 
He pretended to be surprised as well. Police investigators revealed the brutality from which Urbanzik suffered. The coroner's report noted that her skull had been bashed so severely that it was literally crushed. Six of her ribs were also broken on her left side. Meanwhile, Rice was quickly identified as the perpetrator of the crime and was consequently arrested. During an interrogation, the accused revealed that he had plans of robbing the place, but was confronted by the assistant manager. He was charged with one count of murder and murder in the perpetration of robbery. He is set to face 65 years in prison if convicted with all the charges. Considering how gruesome her death was, we couldn't help but wonder what her Banzik could have said or done against Rice for him to do such a horrible thing. Could it be that there was an internal feud that only the two of them knew about? Or did the victim just happen to be in the wrong place at the wrong time? So there were five bosses that got killed by their assistants. Criminal psychologists say that fantasizing about murdering your boss isn't entirely an unhealthy thing. It actually helps employees feel empathy for their superiors in the long run. But what if this further fuels their craving for violence and pushes them to do the unthinkable? So that's it for this episode of Scary Mysteries. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Check out some of our other videos on the right and also our Patreon page where we're putting out one crazy video a week that we can't put here on YouTube. Thanks for tuning in and I'll see you soon.